on the civilian side, we have been having this conference to cover the important aspects. I, I, on my behalf, and once again, as a child, I welcome all of you to this conference. Friends, you know that the entire civil industry is August well for the growth and development. With the recent elections and the new government, India government taking position, it can be a stable government for the next five years in India. It is a very good development. And the government's statements that they want to take India, they want new government want to take India economy to five million, five trillion GDP with a special focus on the tourism infrastructure. For infrastructure itself, they said government is going to spend something like the hundred lakhs crores next five years. All these things, it's a huge opportunity to attract large scale investments, FDI, trade, commerce, promotion of exports and tourism. This will give a big, huge opportunity to aviation sector to grow in a big way. And India is one of the fastest growing market with a double digit passenger growth, which is about 13%. If you see last year, last five years average growth and 8% of the international passenger growth in the last five years. And the country is having ambition from the current level of 350 million passengers to cross 1 billion passengers in the next 10 years. Even in the cargo also, the growth story is the growth is almost about 9%. From a current level of 3.6 million, India is aiming to reach 10 million tons of cargo in the next five years. This gives a few challenging opportunities and we should gain ourselves to meet these challenges. And India in the short in the next five years, it is expected to be the third biggest aviation market in the globe. And if you look at the kind of growth the airlines have offered at the backlog orders more than over 1,000 helicopters out of the aircraft around 600 aircrafts are expected to be there in the next five years, involving a, a huge investment of over 60 billion. Even if you look at airport infrastructure side, it, either in terms of expansion of the existing airports or creating a new grid wells, almost of the lack of gross investment is expected for this. This is kind of opportunities provided to the aviation sector in the country and no other country is having this kind of growth in the world. India is only having a double digit. And from assumption, what we wanted is Today, the, the aviation industry, what kind of challenges it's having, what kind of solutions we should suggest to the uh, government. It, it, from that angle, if you see, today, the, one of the biggest challenges where the aviation industry is facing in India is non availability of low-cost finance with the long-term or long tenure. This is one of the challenges, definitely, this needs to be addressed. The possible solutions could be to overcome this challenge is to support and increase the bond market with the credit enhancement measures so that the bond market is one of those it provides long-term finance, cheaper finance. And also some other countries like the Brazil, they have got a specialized development bank to support the infrastructure. So the same way, even in the recent budget also, the Honorable Finance was made a mention that the government has intention to start a development bank to support infrastructure. This is another solution where it will address the industry problem. And also, for the first time, a statement, a policy statement made in the budget that India government wanted to encourage the aircraft financing and leasing. This is a very good step. Only a few countries in the world having Ireland or China is having this kind of initiative, but India also, government is thinking it's a good step for the industry. And the immoral industry also requests a lot of support. That is also a budget statement has been made. Now, what is important is this how to address the airless high cost operation. The possible solutions could be bring the ATF on the GST that will give input tax credit and that will reduce the cost of operations. And also, our friend uh, Spice has already exposed the possibility of using the biofuel. This could also be one of the solutions to reduce the uh, cost of ATF and operating cost of the airlines. And also, another area where government can help is make use of the effective use of the Dagan uh, uh, facility, huge cost it has been created, it should be made into operations that will improve the air navigation and make the roads right, that will reduce the extra distance what is being covered, that will give a lot of saving of fuel cost to the airlines. These are the very serious ways we can think of helping the airlines so ultimately they have to survive. We have seen recently experience of jet, therefore. Proactively, we should see that what all best can be done from the government side, industry side, to see that the airlines uh, does well. And the MRO industry also requires support because 
today most of the Indian aircrafts are going out of India and getting service. So it is time that Indian MRO industry needs to be supported. So one of the solutions could be give a 10 years GST holiday to an MRO industry because ultimately there is no revenue loss for the government, they are revenue neutral. Therefore, if you give this holiday, they need no, no, no need to charge GST at the time of servicing. If the same aircraft is going outside India, there is no GST. But whereas in India, 80% GST is charged. So that is detracting. So at the level playing grade, a government can extend this 10 year all day. So these are the measures where it will help both airlines as well as airport sector.